So you're looking to get into gigging and maybe you're starting a band or maybe you already have a band that's new and you're wondering if you're ready and you wanna know how many rehearsals do you need before you get out there? Well, there's a definitive answer for that and I'm gonna share it with you in this video. Hey, and welcome to Music Space, where we help working musicians just like you learn how to quickly and easily make a living with your craft. So if you're new here to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded. So there's a lot to think about when you're getting into gigging. Everything from the business side and how much to charge to finding the right people to play with, you know, both of these things, which can be really difficult and much, much more. But there's also rehearsals with your group or band and preparing yourself to get out there on stages and perform. And unfortunately, some bands and musicians may just not be ready to get out there and get on stages and perform yet. So how do you know if you're ready and how many rehearsals do you need before you get out there and start performing? Well, I'm gonna give you five ways to know you're ready and then I'm going to answer the question of how many rehearsals you need. So be sure to watch this video to the end. So the first thing is, do you have the proper equipment? And I know this may sound really simple, like, duh, yeah, we need equipment, but you'd be surprised at the amount of musicians that simply don't have the tools to do their job. You need the musical equipment and the sound equipment to perform in the venues that you're planning to perform in. And each place may require something different and there are venues that have things like sound and instruments already or one of the other. But generally speaking, you need to have your own equipment. So one way to know you're ready is ask yourself, do you have the necessary equipment? Now, you do not need top of the line, state of the art equipment to get the job done. Actually, not so at all. You could use a variety of you know, older equipment as long as it works and gets the job done and it helps you perform the way that you wanna perform and get your music across the way you wanted to get it across. Just make sure you have the equipment and it's up to par. Now, another way to know if you're ready is, do you have a set list together? Your set list is your game plan for your performance. It's the blueprint of how your show will go. You need to have a set list prepared with enough songs to at least get you through the standard three to four hour gig. And generally speaking, that's usually around maybe 30 to 40 songs or so. And again, this is your blueprint. This is like, you know, your instructions when you're going into a game plan. If you're playing sports, if you're playing football, this is the game plan for your show. So your set list also needs to have things on it like where you're going to take breaks at, what parts you're going to do some talking and engage the audience and things like that as well. And this is something that doesn't necessarily need to be like super detailed. You just need to have a basic outline of how your show is going to go because you don't wanna walk into these situations blind. The vast majority of most shows, you're gonna to have to have a little bit of give and take and you may not follow your set list to a T, but at least you have a game plan going in. You can say, hey, we're gonna go from this song to this song to this song and then the next song and then we're gonna take a break and then I'll do some talking here to engage the audience and that is your show plan. Without that, you're just kind of winging it and when you're new to doing this, winging it is not a good idea because you don't really know how to respond to an audience yet and how to go from song to song and not how to let you know, dead space just pile up and you know, you got these dead spaces on stage where you're talking to the drummer and stuff like that, like what are we going to do next? You don't wanna have that kind of stuff going on on stage. So one of the main ways to know that you're ready is you have a set list together. Now next, do you know the music? Do you know your music well to a reasonable degree where it's not necessarily perfect, but can you perform a song to you know, at least a standard level of professionalism where the song can come across and you can get people dancing and people recognize the song. And again, as I said, you don't have to have it perfectly, but you don't need to be on stage fumbling through music, learning chords and trying to pick out stuff here and, you know, trying to direct somebody where to go, trying to tell the 
keyboard player or the drummer, hey, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. You know, the more music that you know and the better you have this music down, the better you're gonna be in these situations. You will absolutely lose your audience really quickly if you're up there fumbling and you're going through the music and it doesn't sound like the song that they hear on the radio. So you need to choose songs that are good songs for the audiences that you're planning to play for. And that takes a little bit of awareness of the demographics that you are going to be playing for. So if you're going to an urban hip hop club or something like that, you probably don't want to show up with a lot of rock band music. But you also need to be choosing songs that are in your band's wheelhouse, meaning songs that you guys can actually play. Some songs are inherently more complicated than others and as musicians, we're all at different levels. So you may not be able to play certain songs, you know, depending on the caliber of musicians that you have in your band, and that's okay. Play the songs that you can play or come up with less complicated versions of these songs that your band can play and that, you know, are to a level that's recognizable where the audience can recognize them and you can still get by with them. But knowing the music is absolutely one of the determining factors in knowing you're ready. Now, another way to know if you're ready is do you and at least most of the band feel comfortable and confident about getting out there? Now this one is a little tricky because it is subjective and everybody's not gonna always feel the same way about everything. But generally speaking, there should be a general sense of comfort and confidence. Not that you just have everything down and not that you're not scared or something like that, but just a general feeling of, okay, we're ready to get out there and try this. And one of the biggest issues with this part is that we as musicians tend to think that audiences and other people who are not musicians think the same way we think. So we tend to be a little bit more pessimistic about whether or not we're ready. So for example, you're in a rehearsal and you can't get this you know, particular lick down in a song that's really not that important to the song, but it's important to you as a band. So you see that as something like, oh my God, we're not ready to do this because we can't get that lick down. But this step is really, really important because when you're on stage, you want to exude confidence because the lack of confidence and the lack of comfort is the one thing that audiences will pick out. So even in this thing of understanding whether or not you and most of the band feel confident and comfortable, one of the things that you want to be doing is practicing that confidence while you're performing and while you're rehearsing. So examining this level of comfort and you know confidence is really one key way to know whether or not you're ready to get out there on stages and perform. Now, another way to know if you're ready is you've asked for feedback. One thing that will absolutely help you know if you're ready and actually help you get ready is to get valuable constructive feedback from other people. And not only will this help greatly with that confidence thing that we just talked about, but it'll also give you areas to work on if you have them. There's a really big chance that there are some areas that you need to work on and improve that you may be blind to that this feedback from others will give you. So you may be thinking you have everything together and that may not be the case. So use your family and your friends to get this constructive, valuable feedback. Have them comment and give you commentary on how you look, how you come across and how you sound. And it's really important to ask them to be honest with you in this assessment, because we know our friends and family are the ones who are going to support us mostly. And then you can ask them something like the ultimate question of, if they were sitting at a bar, would they want to sit, you know, for two or three hours and listen to you playing the way that you look and sound now? And that leads us into the question of how many rehearsals do you actually need? Well, the number that I'm going to say may shock you, but it's this, the amount it takes to get all of these things that I mentioned in this video together. I know that's not like a specific number, like five or 10 or something like that, but that number is going to differ for everybody. It's going to be a different number. Like within two or three rehearsals, if you've gotten all of this stuff together, like you've gotten your equipment, you got your set list together, you got your show together, your blueprint, you've asked for feedback and all of that, then you may be ready to get out there. Whereas after like 10 rehearsals, you still don't really have a blueprint or a set list together yet you may not be ready to jump out there yet. Now, one of the things that you're gonna need help with when you do get out there and start performing is the business side of things. And that's why you wanna check out these videos now. 